Hey everyone, it's Dominic from the Primetime Treasure eBay store and YouTube channel. I am on my way to one of my comic book suppliers. Uh, this is somebody who I went to last month. I did a video where I picked up 15 long boxes of comic books for $500. I've already done very well in that collection. I am still processing it, uh, but I'm making some nice sales through it. Some of which I showed on my most recent video, my um, what sold video. So check that out. Uh, that was my prior video. But um, he gave me a call and let me know that he had four more boxes that he found. I'm not sure. He's not even sure if it's from the same estate that he actually found them from. So. I'm going to check them out. They're short boxes, not long boxes. So if they have bags and boards on them, that should be about 135 books, 140 per box, uh, which would be about 540 comic books. So trying to get them at about 15 cents a piece would mean, um, you know, about 80 bucks. He's going to drive the price up. Um, at least he's going to try to. So I'd probably offer about 60. He'll probably say 100. Hopefully we could come in the middle at uh, at 80. Now if they're not bagged and boarded then there could be more books in there so and it also depends on what type of books are in there. You know he asked me he said you know there's four short boxes I'm not sure if that's worth it for you but it's worth it for me for a couple of reasons. One I don't know what's in there it's about a half hour trip so you know it's worth just checking out. This person doesn't know anything about comic books so there could be some real gems in there and I uh, can wind up getting a good deal. Uh, secondly, I want to keep the line of communications open because this person is always going into estates and finding things and I, you know, we agreed last time I'd be his comic book guy. So whenever he finds comics, you know, he'd call me and uh, make, and you know, I'll make the purchase. But uh, you know, so I want to try to make the purchase if possible. I'm not going to make a bad deal, but as long as they're decent, uh, I want to try to keep that line of communications open so um, you know, he thinks of me the next time that he finds a collection. So it's important to keep those relationships going. So um, we'll see what happens. I don't know if I could put the camera on when I get there. I was able to last time. I'm not sure this time. So we'll check it out, see what happens, and we'll take it from there. All right, well, here they are. Um, we'll take a look at them, see what we got here. This is my first time actually laying eyes on them. They do have bags and boards, but not all of them, so that's good. So there should be more than 135 per box. Off the top of my head right now, I'm not seeing anything great, although I do like to see Spider-Man, so Spider-Man does sell. So that's a good, good sign that there's some of that in there. Let's see what else we got. These are There's some Silver Surfer in here. So I like Silver Surfer. He's actually my favorite comic book character. A nice little run of that. Could sell. That's good. There's some things in here that are not worth much. That's this box. Let's uh, check out the other one. All right, here's box number two. Um, this one here is pretty damaged. It's not worth anything. But anyway, even if it wasn't damaged, but, uh, you know, here's a nice 75 cent comic book. So these go back to the 80s, late 80s, but still nice to see a few of those in there. Um, you know, these titles like New Warriors, they're not really worth anything. Let's keep going. Ultra, not worth anything. Unlimited access, not worth anything. And if it keeps going like this, I'm gonna tell him to just, you know, flip these somewhere else. Let's see, West Coast Avengers. All right, yeah, some, some older stuff. Again, nothing really great though. Nothing that's telling me I need to buy this. All right, here's some 75 cent books, Tales of Teen Titans. There's Thor, a little bit, some older stuff. Again, nothing great yet, nothing that's really jumping out. 
and I'd love to see something like uh, Deadpool. Oh, here's some some Thundercats. I do like Thundercats, but they're older, um, and now I do like Thundercats, but these are pretty damaged. Uh, so, you know, this one, this is what happens when it's not kept in the bag and the board. You know, it's just pretty beat up. So, there's a few of them in there. A little more back here. A bunch of Thundercats, actually. All right, we can keep going. You know, see, this is all damaged right here. Transformers. A few other Transformers in here. Okay, let's keep going. Web of Spider-Man, but they're modern books, you know, $1.50. Check out the other box. All right, let's see what I got here. New Mutants, I'd love to see New Mutants 98. If that was the case, I'd buy everything. But it's not. New Mutants 98 is the first appearance of Deadpool. New Warriors, again, all this New Warrior stuff isn't worth anything. New Warriors. <sighs> New Avengers, not going to be worth anything. The modern Avengers, they don't really do very well. You have to have large lots of them to sell them. Not looking good, folks. This is, unless there's something in this last box, I am going to have to pass on this. X-Factor, another thing. Unless you have a big lot of them, you can't really do much with them. Nope. All right, so this is the last box. I mean, this one right here, you can see it's just bent and damaged, destroyed. Can't do anything with it. Um, you know, now if there were a bunch of these in there, I'd buy them, but you could even see this one's pretty damaged. It's not going to be worth anything. But if there, there, if there were boxes of these 30 cent issues, then I'd pick it up. But, you know, it's not. It's mostly modern stuff with pretty bad titles that are not sought after. The few Spider-Mans that are in here just don't make it worth it. Let's see what else. Nothing, no key issues at all. I'm gonna flip the box around here. Let's see, Let's see. Do we find a gem in here? Nope, it's all just Avengers stuff. Modern Avengers. Yeah, you could tell the age by the price. So these $1.25 issues, $1.50 issues, those are all going to be from the 1990s. And that's really the time frame when, <clears throat> when comic books are not worth anything uh, significant, with few exceptions. Uh, we've talked about that before. But uh, yeah, this is all just what we call fill. It's all bulk. Um, you know, it's something he should really take somewhere and flip them for, try to flip them for a dollar a piece or something like that. But uh, it's nothing I'm gonna buy. It's one, it's one of the advantages of having so many comic books. You know, I could be kind of judicious in terms of the purchases. Hopefully he'll appreciate me telling him, you know, listen, this is, this is something you should just flip for a buck a piece somewhere. So as much as I would have loved for there to have been great comic books and those uh, four boxes that would have been worth the drive and worth purchasing, it just wasn't going to work out. Uh, the books were just not worth it. There was too much damage. The titles weren't good. They'd all need to be rebagged and boarded. They'd all need to be put in new boxes. These are all things you have to try to account for when you're looking at a collection like this. Uh, you know, I had a pretty bad feel when I look through the first box. Usually if one box is bad, the other ones are usually consistent with it if they come from the same collection and vice versa. Usually if one box is good, you're generally going to find some good things in the other boxes. Um, so, you know, things that I was looking for was number one, condition. I mean, you could have a great book, but if the condition is terrible, it's really going to cut down on the 
uh, value. So you saw that there were a bunch of them that were bent. There were a bunch of them that had stains on them uh, that were wrinkled and creased. Uh, so, you know, out of that whole collection, there's going to be a significant portion of them that I wouldn't even try to resell because that's the thing you have to factor in too with your business is you want to be known for someone who sells quality stuff so i don't really want to sell stuff that is too much damage to it so you got to factor that in so another thing that you want to pay attention to are the titles the titles in those boxes were generally ones that were not good there was a lot of x factor and new avengers and modern avengers series just things that fans are not really looking for People will buy them if you have the whole continuous run of the series, but there wasn't anything like that there. There was some Spider-Man, which was good, but there wasn't enough of it to make a purchase of that entire collection worthwhile when you factor in how many titles in there were not good and when you factor in the damage to some of the books and the reboarding and the reboxing and the rebagging that would be needed for that collection. Um, it's good to go over collection like that though because that's an example of something you might see at a flea market or garage sale so you need to know kind of some general tips to look for another thing I'll tell you in terms of some general tips would be you want to avoid for the most part books from the 1990s so those are the ones with those dollar twenty five dollar fifty cover prices on them there's some exceptions like if you ever came across New Mutants number 87 which is the first appearance of Cable or if you came across uh, New Mutants 90 which is the first appearance of Deadpool those are highly sought after if you could get the first uh, printings of them so you have to be careful with that as well uh, and you could do well uh, if you find those there's a, there's other ones as well you you know you have to look them up and you have to do your research but uh, in general you know those are not the books you want when things went into the 2000s and the 2010 era to the present age and they started working in variant covers which were covers that were different from the standard version that were done by certain artists and they had more limited runs that's when things started to turn around in terms of um, you know what books started to become worth so some modern books could be good but I like to see also that there's some older books in there so I'm looking for ones that are 75 cents or less so there's 75 cents books 65 cent books 50 cent books 30 cent books 5, um, 15 cent books 12 cent 10 cent hard to find the 12 and 10 cent ones although occasionally you'll find them um, so but there really wasn't anything like that. There were a few 75 cent books, but most of those were damaged. Like I showed you those Thundercats ones. I would have loved to have had them if they were in great condition, but they weren't. So really a combination of bad titles, damage, um, and um, just you know, not a continuous real run of anything of much significance um, really made me stay away from that. Plus them being mostly modern books. So... Um, you know, I just let him know. I was honest with him. I told him, listen, you know, part of our, you know, working relationship has to be me being honest with you and telling you, um, you know, something else you should do with these books. Take them somewhere at another venue, flip them for a buck a piece and try to get some of your money back. And that's what he'll do because he sets up at other venues. So he'll flip them that way. And um, he appreciated that. And he said to me, well, you know what? I'm going into the States all the time. I'm going into one on Sunday. If I come across any other comics, I'll give you a call, let you know and um, you could come directly to the estate and take them there for a lower price. One of the reasons I had to pay up a little bit more last time when I came here uh, to, to, to the location um, for the 15 long boxes was because um, he actually pulled them all out of the estate and lugged them all back to where, you know, where he's located. So, you know, pay a little, pay a little up for that, but uh, that's understandable. But next time, go directly to the state. Now, I am not going to let this, um, you know, business deal that didn't happen um, ruin the day. I am going to try to turn uh, lemons into lemonade, and I'm going to hit up an estate sale, which was just advertised. So it's. Um, advertise is kind of like a treasure hunt so i'm hoping it's kind of a pick and pull uh it's in an older area and so uh hoping there's still some good things left uh, it started around nine o'clock so right now it's around 11 so whatever the mad rush of people that you know got there they're already gone so you're just gonna have people trickling in throughout the day so this is part of what i like to do is see all the stuff that everybody uh left behind and hopefully we could dig out some good things in there so we'll see so I'm on my way to the estate sale, and what do I find on the way there? 
unexpectedly an auction and I've not been to an auction before and so I really want to check this out to see what it's like so I'm gonna walk on over there uh, I saw the sign out I saw some people there it started at 10 o'clock so it's 11 o'clock um, I, I just got to check this out for myself and see if this is worth it or not to look at in the future so we'll go see gonna go check it out see um, see if it's worth it That is exactly what I thought it was going to be like and exactly why I do not go to auctions. Why do I want to sit there all day going up against all these other people in a bidding war for these items that I can't even test them if they work. I can't even really check them out really well. Yeah, you could go to a preview, but it's too big of an investment of time. And plus, again, I, you have to pay a, you, a fee. You have to pay a fee to the auctioneer. You have to worry about whether or not there are shill bidders in the audience. Uh, just not my thing. I really like the treasure hunt aspect of going out, finding stuff, picking stuff. I am not gonna sit there in a chair all day uh, bidding up against other people just not gonna happen so I'm glad I got to check it out and get to show you um, at least what that auction was like I don't know if all auctions are like that but um, uh, if you have experience at auctions let me know I know some people have done well at some auctions but there's a reason why I really don't see it come up much in terms of a place where people go sourcing who resell um, but again, maybe you have another experience, uh, let me know. Um, but uh, boy, something like that though, that is just not my cup of tea. All right, heading off to that estate sale. All right, now this is more what I'm talking about right here. We're at the estate sale. There is stuff all over the lawn on that side and on that side. Still seems like there's plenty of things left. They've got a garbage dump on the outside, which means they were clearing tons of stuff out of this one level house. So um, probably lots of stuff was packed in there. Hopefully there's some good stuff left. Uh, gonna go hit it up and see what we can find. That is the sign I like to see, make an offer. No fixed prices, perfect. So I asked him if he had any comic books, the guy who is uh, running this uh, estate sale, it's a family member, and they brought out these old comic books which are not worth anything uh, because they're just comic-y, cartoony based ones and they're damaged and they're, these are just not worth anything. You could see how, how beat up they are. Um, and just some old magazines here that really aren't worth anything. But um, he did bring out a sampling of this one here, Your Pony magazine. And there's a whole giant box of them that he just brought out from the inside that goes all the way back to the 1950s. So, problem is there's no comps for this exact magazine. There are people interested in Shetland Pony magazines. It's old enough and specialized enough with a big giant continuous run that this is probably going to be worth picking up. Getting it at the right price, though, is the trick. So uh, that's what I got to try to figure out right now. I mean, there's a ton of these in here. I mean, that's the size of the box. So it goes all the way 
you know, deeper down than that than I can even show you, all the way down to the 1950s. Is do a count, is count these to try to come to a better estimate so I could figure out a price on these things. There's 125 of these magazines in here. My gosh. So I offered him $20 for the entire box, and he said that's fine. That works out to about 16 cents an issue. So that should, uh, I should do really well on that. Uh, then I found this, which is the Illustrated Wildlife Treasury. I used to have this when I was a kid, and if the box is filled like this, it could bring in almost as much as $90. So I'm gonna pick this up as well. And he just brought out another box from inside of these old, um, more pony and harness racing magazines and these things can be popular with us you know a certain group of people i know the shetland group uh, uh i know that the shetland pony ones are popular for sure so we're going to check these out as well so there's a lot of old shetland pony stuff from the 1950s which is great because those do sell uh and then inside there's these smaller books from the 1960s, the pony record. This dude just brought out another box. This is insane. Now look at these, these are old trotting uh, magazines, trotting bread from the 1970s. There's a ton of them in here. And this is crazy. And then he brought out these random ones like this 1935 annual. I mean, individually these things will sell, something like that. Look at this old saddlery book. I mean, this is great. This is going to turn into a nice score. All because I asked him well, if there was stuff that I was looking for in the house. None of this stuff was outside. You have to ask. It's how I make some of my major finds and major scores like this is by asking. Well, I started off the day thinking that I was going to purchase three small boxes of comic books, but instead I wound up buying three large boxes of vintage horse books, pony books from the 1950s and 1960s. This was a huge score. Um, things actually going back to the 1930s. This wildlife card collection is incredible. I can't believe it's all filled up like that. Uh, wound up getting these nice black and white horse photos. Um, also, I wasn't able to talk at the time because there was people near me, but if you could find these old cans, these vintage cans of uh, spray snow, check out the comps on them. They go for really well. I got to clean it up a little bit, but um, you know, they could go up for like, you know, up to like 50 bucks or more sometimes depending on the brand. No one actually has this particular brand up, but this is a nice looking can. So I think it'll sell and it's full. So that always helps. Uh, and then I just you know, grabbed a couple random uh, patches. I don't know if they're worth anything, but everything here I got for $50. So uh, I really think I made a good score here. We'll talk a little bit more about it in a moment. All right, well, it's a successful end to the day. I'm super excited to start working on that collection and processing it and piecing it out. I'm already thinking about how I'm gonna uh, send all that stuff out. I think what I'm gonna do is for like that first box of pony magazines Sell all the ones from the 1950s or maybe even do it by year because I absolutely cannot ship out that one big box I mean that thing is so so heavy. So uh, I'm gonna probably split it off a little bit into different uh, units But uh, I'm excited, you know $50. I can make $50 back from selling that snow can potentially or uh, from selling those uh, wildlife cards. So it's gonna be a nice profit in the end with that purchase. The main lesson I want everyone to learn from today's video is you have to ask for what you want. You gotta go after it, you have to go get it. It's not gonna all be laying out in front of you. Um, the only thing that was laying out that I wound up finding was the box of wildlife cards. Everything else uh, was either stuff I dug for in the garage or the main prize, which was all of those magazines, 
were things that I asked him for and he went in and he went and got. Now I had asked him if he had comic books, he brought some out, they, they were not good. So this was not my day for comics for sure. But I also told him I'm into vintage magazines, anything in kind of a niche specialized area. And uh, you know, he pulled out some things that you know were not interesting initially. Um, but then he brought out all those pony magazines. He told me he had them back there. I said, all right, well bring out, bring out one of them. Just let me look at one. And I saw enough in the one. I was interested to see how big this box was. I couldn't believe the size of the box he came out with. Then he just kept coming out with box after box of stuff and handfuls of stuff. It was crazy. It just all started building up. Um, but again, you know, that's why you just have to ask. And that's why I wound up getting that stuff that was inside the house. This estate sale was not one where you could go inside. They were just hauling stuff out of there. They didn't want anyone inside. So everyone else who came who may have been potentially interested in that for the first three hours of the sale, um, they didn't wind up getting it. There I come, show up three hours after the sale starts because I'm out trying to get those comics that I didn't get, but um, wound up turning it around just by asking and um, sure enough, he brings out that stuff and it wound up being a great deal. So I'm super excited. Um, I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you come to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. There's tons of tips and hints and videos and news links and everything. It's all free. Just go down below, uh, you know, hit the uh, link to it and just hit join. That'll submit a join uh, request to me and I let people in pretty fast. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. That's uh, at Primetime Treasure. I put up little videos that I don't put up on, on YouTube. So that's another way to check some of the things out that I'm doing. Uh, also, um, you know, just make sure that um, you are subscribed to this channel because that will give you notifications that videos are coming out. Also helps to support the channel. Trying to get up to 900 subscribers. We're at 885, so need 15 more to go. So if you're one of those people that are getting things out of this video but you haven't subscribed yet, please just help me out by subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Check out all the links I have in my description section. There's all sorts of things in there, uh, all sorts of um, you know, you know, goodies that help me out with my reselling business. There are affiliate links, so if you purchase anything through there, it does help me out, uh, help support the channel, so I appreciate that very much. And uh, with that, I am going to start processing this stuff and get some things listed, and I'll see you all at the next video. Thanks, everyone.